Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to the final day of Fantasy Week for Hatsubasho 2023. Here we're going to go over Secatory Oracle. Now, I picked this game to go last because I think it's probably the simplest to explain. As you can see, there's not even a rules link on this front page. You actually have to go to their original site to see the rules. Uh, it's so simple to explain that I figured, you know, it's going to be easy, we'll get through it quickly. And then I went to the rules page just to double check it because, you know, I like to go over the rules officially with everybody, uh, especially with games we haven't talked about before. And this is what I found. Secatory Oracle is the sister game to Secatory Toto. Just as Secatory Toto makes the ideal game to play first among the daily games during a Basho, because it forces its players to pick a winner for all the matches that day, which can then be narrowed down to comprise your entries for the other daily games, Secatory Oracle is a great game to play first among the pre-Basho games, Hoshitori, Upside Down Hoshitori, Jurio Game, I don't know what GISP is, as it also makes players think about the entire spectrum of Secatory before a Basho. Yeah. Apparently we should have started with this. Well, I don't expect this to be the last time we do Fantasy Week. I have enjoyed doing this and this has given me a reason to spend more time on the games. Uh, so next time, next time let's remember to do Oracle first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's go on with the actual rules here. Okay, here's how to play. Simply predict what all Secretary's records will be at the upcoming Basho by selecting the online form and pressing submit your picks at the bottom of the page. So you are predicting all the records. That is exactly what it sounds like. Are they going to go 9 and 6, 8 and 7, 5 and 10? You're deciding for everybody. And remember, a Secretary is not Makauchi, it's Makauchi and Jurio. So that's 70 guys minus whoever's sitting out, which is 68 guys. I mean, 68 guys are, are fighting, not 68 guys are sitting out. For each secretary, you will score points according to how close your prediction is to the actual record. So if you nail it, that's 10 points, great. If it's 15 wins off, minus 5. So if you picked Teratiyoshi last time to go 15-0, and 0, you got minus 5 points. That's bad, so that would make it seem like we don't want to go with the really extreme numbers. The maximum possible score, presuming all 70 secretary are competing, is thus 700 points. Right. Important. Any Rikishi who withdraws before the first day of the tournament will be excluded from scoring. So if only 60 compete, the maximum possible score becomes 600. Any picks that were submitted for Kyuja Rikishi will be disregarded. So even if you put numbers in for Terra no Fuji or Ichi no Joe, they're not going to count. So the people who know they're going to be out are not going to have an advantage over the people who don't. That's really how that works. As they say, there's no alternate picks because you're picking all of the secretary, uh, and then it's whoever has the most points overall. So let's go back to the game and look at how this plays out. So here we have the entry form. It's pretty straightforward. Terra Fuji, okay, we're not going to do anything for him, 0-15. So Taki Keisho, what record do we think he's going to have? Uh, Wakataka Kage, what record do we think he's going to have? Like that. Now, remember that the farther off you are, the worse it is. So that immediately leads to the thought, well, what if you just pick the middle ground for everybody? Average number of wins is supposed to be seven and a half, right? So the middle ground is either seven or eight. Well, what happens if you pick seven or eight for everybody? All right. If you are able to pick a seven for all the guys who have losing records and an eight for all the guys who have winning records, you're probably going to do pretty good, you'd think. But that's hard to do. What if we keep it simple? What if we go with just eight wins for everybody. How is that going to turn out? Well, let's look at the last Basho at the results and see how that kind of strategy would have panned out. So this says the Hatsu Basho 2023 results. Obviously, that's not what this is. This is for Kyushu. If you look, we see 574 points for first. And if we scroll down to the last place, we see 523. We want to see how the winners did. So let's look at Screeching Owl's entry. Okay, so let's go down the line here. So he's got, so we can see right now there are a lot of 7s and 8s here. Um, he's got Takakesho with 11, and that was good. So he ended up with 9 points. You know, 11, 1 off, 9 points, right? Wakatakakage, he actually would have been better off just going with an 8 there. Because he was he only got 8 points because he was off by 2. 8, 8, 8, 8, 
six for Toby Zaru. Thought he was going to have a losing record. He was right about that. He got nine points. Seven, seven, eight, seven, six, and six for Ichino, Joe, and Ura. Those ended up being very, like, green star level here for those two picks. Um, seven, seven, blah, 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 blah. Ryudin, nine, got it on the money. And then Abi, nine, which seemed like a really easy pick. But even then, so Abi seemed in a position to really dominate given the rank he was at. But what this guy did, what the guy who ended up winning did, he just bumped up a little bit over that eight mark. So let's keep going down the line and see what those all look like. Down, like down in Jirio. Okay. Okanoumi. Oh, he thought Okanoumi wasn't going to do very good, so he was a little short there. Obviously, Chio Tairu, you know, he went with seven. He was on the right side of the Kachikoshi question, but, I mean, Chio Tairu just left. If he had fought the whole tournament, he probably would have been pretty close. Uh, Azumaru, we've talked about this in other videos. Azumaru has never had a winning record, so six is a pretty safe bet. He got to seven. Okay, cool. Um, Atami Fuji, okay, that was a mistake. A lot of us thought Atami Fuji was going to have a good tournament. He totally fucked it up so that's the one real error we've seen so far we go down 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 and he's hokuseiho he had with nine and we talked about that with the jirio game hokuseiho has been crushing it so nine was a pretty reasonable choice but everyone else is eights and sevens we'll scroll a little more you know he had some faith in kin boson didn't pay off as much as he would have liked everyone else's sevens and eights okay so, I recognize the name Screeching Owl from other games. He's done this a lot. I think he. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I recognize the name. Good performer. So, let's go with that thought of, what if we just simplified it, because we've never played this before, and go with eight. Let's say, what happens if we were to pick an eight for everybody? How would that have done here? I'm going to bust out the calculator, scroll to the top. So, I'm going to put in the points that we would have had for each person if we had put eight wins in for everybody. So like Takakesho, we would have scored six points because we were four off. Shodai, we would have scored eight points because we were two off. Waka, we would have scored 10 because we were right on the money. Hoshoryu, we would have scored seven because we were three off. Now I'm not gonna make you watch all 69 guys or 68 guys or whatever. Uh, I will do all this math and I will come back with the total. All right, here we are at the bottom of the list. It looks like we would have scored 565 points had we just done eight wins for everybody. Well, if the winner had 574, that's pretty good, I think. Let's see where we would have finished on the list. All right, let's write the number in big five, 65. And we can see on the side, well, 574, 573. Holy crap, 565 is all the way down here. 18th, we would have tied for 18th place. That's not amazing. All right, I'm going to scroll down real quick. All right, 60 people played. So finishing 18th out of 60 isn't bad. Top third, okay. So a safe play is to go with eight for everybody about that. The obvious thing to do is going to be to then adjust those numbers. So if we're really sure somebody's going to have a losing record or we think it's a very high odds, move them to a seven. If we think there's a very good chance they're going to go above eight, you know, bump them up a little bit. That seems to be what Screeching Owl did. I assume that given how close the top 24 are, I mean, look, from one to 24, it's only a 12 point difference. So that's probably going to be the approach. All right, let's go to the entry form. Back at a blank entry form, everything says 0-15. Back at a blank entry form, everyone's at 0-15. So I'll start by switching everybody except the people who are QJO to 8-7. and 7. All right, there we go. Everybody's set to 8-7 and 7, all the way top to bottom. By the way, if you want an easy way to do that quickly, the way these drop-down menus work, when they have, especially when they have numbers like this, uh, you can just press the first number and it will give you that number on the on the drop down. All you do is if you hit tab twice. So if you're on a record like this and you hit tab twice, you go to the next one. And then if I say, oh, I want to make this a six, I can make that a six or seven or an eight. Right. So by doing that, 
Like, let's say I wanted to make everybody a nine. I could do tab, tab, nine, tab, tab, nine, tab, tab, nine. But that's what I did to get everybody down to eight and seven. So I'll make that an eight, tab, tab, eight, tab, tab, eight, and there we go. It's a lot quicker than trying to click, click all of the drop down menus. A little speed tip for you. And now it's time to go through and change the people who we think need to be changed. So anyone we're sure about having a losing record will switch to a seven. Anyone we're sure about doing almost certainly better than eight wins will switch to a nine. I don't know if I'm gonna go with 10 for anybody. I don't know if I'm gonna go with six for anybody. So we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, Takakesho, obviously we're gonna go at least nine there. I, I realize he's been doing quite well lately, um, the latest Chris Sumo video, he pointed out that the last couple times Takakesho was on a Yokozuna run, he got injured and dropped out. I mean, the past does not predict the present, but I, I really don't know that I want to put 10 for anybody. If I was going to, I think it would be him. I'll come back to this later. I'll think about it. Wakataka Kage, I mean, especially after last time, I think because he's so good at hitting winning records, going to nine is very reasonable. Um... Because even if he struggles, let's say he might even go 7 and 8. Well, his ceiling is probably like 11 or 12 wins. So 9 wins is very reasonable here. Hoshoryu, again, I would be very, I would be more surprised if he got 7 wins than 11. So I think 9 is a reasonable pick here. Takiyasu, I'm going to leave him at 8 and 7 just because he could spike on that and get to 12 or he could you know have his neck fall apart and then only end up at four and drop out halfway through so we're leaving him at eight should i man eight and seven do i really want to change that like do i really think he's going to have a losing record see i didn't i used to think that he was just like it was just a mental issue um like the pressure of being ozeki and i think a lot of people feel that that's the case I didn't know that he had suffered an injury. I knew he had been hurt early in his Ozeki run. Um, I didn't know it was apparently lingering, which you know I have heard recently. So I'll go with the losing record for him. Uh, Kiribayama, Kotonawaka, Mese, all reasonable eight and sevens. Wakamoto Haru eight and seven. Tobizaru and Daisho. See, there's a question of if all these guys are going to have winning records, where are the loss is going to come from, and. Tobizaru and Daisho went seven and eight last time, but they could easily go eight and seven this time. I want to stick to the strategy of just leaving them all at eight and seven until such point as I find guys who I think shouldn't be there. So I do not in any way expect the totals for the guys who are fighting on this list to come out with the same number of wins and losses. I'm not trying to balance them that way. You know, having too many eight and sevens is fine. I'll go with it. So Toby, Daisho, eight and seven, that's fine. I think Mitaki Yumi at seven and eight makes more sense. Tamawashi, you, I mean, who the hell knows with this guy? We'll leave him. Abi, I don't want to move him off eight and seven now that he's in the joy. Midori Fuji, leave him alone. Nishiki Fuji, leave him alone. Sadnoumi Ryuden. Ryuden? Yeah, eight and seven is fine for Ryuden. Nishikigi is another one of those guys that I think is going to just hit real close to that mark even though I wouldn't have thought it in the past, you know, he's been proven it, so why not run with it? Kudo Fuji, Miyogiryu, I keep saying Miyogiryu is gonna go eight and seven or seven and eight. Aura, yep, Onosho, yep, Oho, yep. All right, let's scroll down. Takanosho, yep, Endo, yep, Aoyama. Hmm, Aoyama eight and seven here? Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, here to Umi, yep, leave it. Chiyoshoma, leave it. Touching Ocean, leave it. Yeah, all of these guys could very easily go eight and seven. All of them, every single one. Kota Shoho, Kota Echo, all of them. Um, I'm gonna go seven, eight on Ichi, Ezumaru, and uh, Mitoryu, because history would suggest that they are more likely to end up on the wrong side of that. Whoops. They're more, more likely to end up on the wrong side of the 50-50 line. Surugishu, Takara Fuji, well, yeah, I think he's done. This one, he might make me look stupid, but I think he's probably done. All right, we're into Jurio now. Can we get all of them on the screen? Yeah, all right. Akawa, no reason he can't go eight and seven. Bushou's on eight and seven. So if you watched my video for the Jurio game, 
one thing I mentioned was that we have Hokuseiho, Atami Fuji, Ashoma, and Kinbozan all sitting there in the top rank. So Aqua, Bushozan, Daimami, to Tohakuryu, Enho, they all got to fight these guys. And towards the bottom of the list, they might not have to fight Hokuseiho, but they'll have to deal with, and I disrespected Tochi Musashi at first, but I, I came around. They got him on the docket, farther down they got Roga, they got Kanayama, and then of course, Asanoyama. So these are the guys that y'all have to watch out for. So how are some of these guys gonna do? Like Daimami is just all busted up. Uh, I think he's pretty safe seven and eight. Oshoma, Atami Fuji, do I think Hokuseiho? Yeah, I think Hokuseiho is probably gonna get nine. That seems pretty likely. I think it's very likely that he's gonna get a Kachikoshi and get promoted. So if I'm sure he's gonna go Kachikoshi, but not to what degree, nine and six is a pretty reasonable guess. Enho, man, I, I think he's gonna end up seven and eight. Like, I really like him and I like to see him succeed, but oof. Toha Kuryu seems to just yo-yo but I don't have a really great reason to move him off eight and seven, so I'll leave him. Koto Kuzan, you know, this is about his level. Cherno Umi, woof. See, Daishoho, I think I want to put it seven and eight. Why didn't that take? Seven and eight, there we go. Chiono Kuni, Kinbozan, Tochi Musashi, but he's got, he's got that veteran, the, those veteran smarts. I've seen him put those to use. So we'll leave him on eight. Tochi Musashi, probably eight. Uh, Shimano Umi just keeps faltering, so I think he's on seven. Kitana Waka, I, you know, I think I know something about the guy, and then he proves me wrong, whether I think good or bad, so we'll leave him. Hidden Umi, you know, down here, he'll probably get some wins. Teratsuyoshi, I mean, we don't know how busted up he is, so we're gonna go with seven there. Chiyo Sakai, I don't even know, man. Kaisho, we're gonna go seven, eight. And uh, he seemed very likely to start dropping out of the division. Like, he did not do good last time, and the, the competition hasn't gotten any easier. Tsushi Minata seems, you know, 7 8, 8 7. I have no reason to change it. Shona Noumi, yeah, he's the guy who was in Makushita for like 10 years, and he just made it to Jurio. So he's on a little bit of a roll. Yeah, we'll leave it alone. Asano Yama, I'm going 11. I can't imagine he's going to win fewer than 11 fights. This is a safety bet here with 11. In fact, should I go 12? Like, if I think he could go anywhere from 11 to 15, I should really go at least 12. Because I think 11 to 13 is his probable range. So we're going 12 for Asanayama. So that's it. Those are the picks. We've got a lot of 8 and 7s, some 7 and 8s. We got the 12 and 3 Asanayama at the bottom. We've got Hokuseiho at nine and six, and then we've got some guys at the top at nine and six because they should be able to pop off a little bit, and they are good enough chances at anywhere from like eight to 11 wins that putting them on nine makes sense. That's it for Secatory Oracle, and that is it for Fantasy Week for Hatsubasho 2023. At the time you watch this video, it should be just hours before the start of competition. Have a great time with the Basho, and I will see you soon.